Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So in this tutorial, we're going to be making a really stunning tray using resin and abalone shells. So this is the tray that we're going to be making in this tutorial and it's got the abalone shells encrusted in the resin and I feel like it is absolutely stunning. Stunning. I'm really happy with how this turned out and you're going to just need a few things to get started So I'm using this silicon mold. It also came with the handles, but you can obviously use whatever handles you like um, I just got this off my Amazon store so you can find one the similar shapes I just thought this looked really pretty with obviously the shells because they're all unusual shapes and this is an unusual shape but you could use like any sort of silicon mold that you have it's completely up to you and then i also just bought abalone chips um also through my amazon store so feel free to jump on if you want to purchase these items and then um whatever colors i decided to try to mimic the colors that were already in the shells so i went for a violet pearl color um, a shimmery green, a shimmery purple, and a black that was like also a shimmery black. So everything very sparkly. And then I also did use a sparkly top coat. Completely up to you. If you obviously get like lighter colored shells, you could maybe go the opposite end of the spectrum and go for all really light shimmery colors. But the abalone shells I got were all like had the black running through and quite dark. So that's why I decided to go for a darker color palette. To start with, you're going to need a mold. I am just using this geode shape mold that I got off my Amazon store. But any mold that you like to use for this technique is completely fine. I'm mixing up some casting resin. So this is the casting resin from Make Art Resin, which is a Gold Coast based brand. And it's called their Crystal Cast. It's a 2 to 1 ratio resin, which means it's perfect for casting. It's got a really thin viscosity, so it's going to get a lot less bubbles than if you were to use your general epoxy based resin and you just need to mix it for about two to three minutes once you have poured it up to get it ready to add your pigment into it. Once your resin's mixed up, just double check that your mold is nice and clean because whatever dust or dirt or any residue that you have in your silicon mold is going to transfer through when you cast into it. So you can either use some alcohol spray or I'm just using a bit of uh, painter's tape just to pick up a few hairs that I noticed that were in the mold. Once your resin's mixed up, it is then time to start adding your color pigments in. All the pigments I'm using today are all powder big pigments, just because I want to be using um, shimmers through this to match in with the abalone shell. And generally, your shimmer pigments are powder pigments. I have got a dark purple that I will add all of the names down below. I've got a black shimmer pigment, which is from Artie Sue, and it's no longer available got this lime green one and I've also got this iridescent uh, pearly white pigment that's like a duochrome from Pearl FX. I'm just going to be adding probably like two pea size amounts into each um, of my containers and then adding my resin in. I am mixing up more of my white and my black um, instead of my purple and my green because I just want my purple and my green to kind of be accent colors and I want the majority of this pour to be my black and my white. Once all your colors are mixed up, you can then just start to pour them in. I poured this really randomly uh, just because I wanted to have a really beautiful blending to kind of match in with that abalone shell. If you look at the abalone shells, like no two are the same and they're really random patterns. So I just kind of was layering them, adding bit by bit um, and seeing how it went. And then I also then used a heat gun to kind of help blend that out even more. I did wait until once I had gotten the majority of my color down just to add in my white because I know with white and bold colors, you can generally end up just losing it. It just gets sort of sometimes um, 
completely taken over in the other colors. So that's why I waited to the end. And you can see I've noticed that the board, uh, the serving tray, sort of the dolly that I have, not dolly, it's called a Lazy Susan. <laughs> the Lazy Susan that I have uh, got my geode on is a little bit lopsided and I started to know all of my resin was just pouring off to one side. So I did have to decide to pull it off. Luckily, I'd already put some plastic underneath and could just slide it straight off. But yeah, probably best when you're doing any sort of pouring to just double check to make sure your surface is 100% level because otherwise you'll get what I had where everything was going off to the one side. With my heat gun, I just blended in all the different colors of my resin. I just wanted this to look really random, really natural, and I didn't want to have any big chunks of color. I wanted it to look like the abalone shell, where when you turn it into the different points in the light, you see different parts of that color coming through, like the bit of the green, the purple, the white, the black. So the heat gun was really helpful for this just to blow it around and it also got rid of any bubbles that might be in my casting resin. I did put this on a really low heat. You don't want to add too much heat to your silicon molds just because it can damage them. And now you can see me just sliding that off, trying to do it so carefully not to spill any resin out of uh, my geode mold and I actually managed to do it pretty well. I only spilled a tiny bit and even the movement helped blend out that resin even more. I shouldn't have put it on um, my Lazy Susan in the first place because it wasn't 100% even. Once you've waited a good 10 to 15 minutes, even 20 minutes, depending on where you are and the temperature and the kind of brand of resin that you're using, you can then start adding the abalone shells in. So you don't want to do it straight away when the resin is still really fresh because the surface tension to the resin is really weak when it's first mixed up. So anything you place in it is going to sink down to the bottom, especially if it's more dense than the resin. So that's why you've got to wait about like anywhere from like 10 to 20 to 30 minutes before you start adding in the abalone shells otherwise you'll find that the resin will just um, completely overwhelm them and start to cover them and you don't want to end up losing all of your pretty shell detail Once you're happy with the placement of all your shells, you can then go and place your handles in. I recommend doing this when the resin is at that gelling point because that way they're not going to fall over. They're going to have something that they can sort of grip to and the resin's not going to slip and slide. And that's the perfect time to place the handles in. You can always wait till after uh, your piece is completely finished and drill holes and um do it that way but I kind of prefer to just use the resin as a glue for my handles and that way you know they're in cast in and they're not going to come out. Okay so I've got the first layer down and my handles in. I'm going to wait about 20 minutes to half an hour. This does depend on the temperature of your room where you are for the kind of timing wise for when you should put the shells in. If you put them in straight away, they're just gonna sink into the resin um, because anything that's obviously heavy going into like an object like resin is gonna sink to the bottom unless the resin has thickened. So if you put it in straight away when the resin's really fluid, they're all just gonna go straight to the bottom because they're heavier than the resin. So you've gotta kind of wait until that resin starts to gel, not fully set, because obviously we wanna encase these in the resin. So about like I reckon 20 minutes to half an hour for me. It is summer here in Queensland so it is hotter. If you're in a colder climate you might need to wait like 40 minutes an hour. It just depends. I would recommend adding one or two in, watching it, seeing if they do sink over like 5 to 10 minutes. And then if they don't sink then add the rest in. And the design and the pattern can be up to you. I think I'm going to have most of them clustering around the center and then softy, softly softly expanding out. It has been about five hours and it's time to do the next layer. 
for the next layer, I'm just going to do a clear coat and this is just going to fully cover the top of all of my abalone shells and also help really lock in my handles so that way they're not going to be wobbly, they're going to be really uh, secure into the resin. So this is the same resin that I used the first time but I've just added some of that Artisu sparkle powder. It is very um, subtle and I really like it a lot and then I'm just going to pour that over the top. It just gives it a little bit of extra shine and sparkle and I feel like it really helps finish this piece. I'm really happy with how it's looking. It's so beautiful and the resin colors that I chose, I feel like work really well with the abalone shell. So I've just demolded it and the last sort of finishing touch that I'm gonna do on it is just to add a border of gold. So I'm trying a new technique, which is using an acrylic clear varnish and mixing that with some gold pigment. So the gold pigment I'm using is pale gold from Barnes and I've used probably about five mils of varnish and then like two scoopfuls like paddle pop scoopfuls of the pale gold from Barnes mixing that together and then getting a paintbrush to apply it. The type of varnish I'm using is a bit smelly um, it had quite a strong odor to it and I'll add a link below to it but um, it worked really well it was just a little bit smelly and I'd probably recommend wearing a mask because I found it kind of gave me a little bit of a headache. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of this tutorial putting abalone shell chips into resin to create a serving board? Um, I would really love to get some feedback on this. Is this something that you would try at home? If you don't already, make sure you go and follow me on all of my other social medias. It's Sherry Vegas across everything. TikTok, Instagram, obviously YouTube. Um, Facebook, it's all across the same, so definitely go and check me out as I post different things on every platform. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I love to post lots of arts, crafts, and DIY projects every single week. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that way you get notified every single time I do upload and you don't miss out on a tutorial. And if you ever have any ideas or anything you want me to try out, don't forget to leave it in the comments below. I'm always open to new ideas. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up as that really helps me out. It lets the YouTube algorithm know to keep sharing this video to more people. Thank you guys so much for watching.